Hello and welcome. This is Amaka Ifibnando, the Excel coach. You're welcome to today's training. And in today's training, I'll be showing you how to design chart of account, journal, ledger, and trial balance in Excel. This is some parts of the accounting cycle. Uh, not to make this training very long, I had to cut things and stop at the trial balance. In the second part, will be this, I'll show you how to design the income statement and the balance sheet. But before I go on, let me just use a minute to say thank you for helping this channel reach the threshold and even exceed the 1,000 subscribers. I want to use this opportunity to say thank you. So to walk along in this training, I'll be dropping a link where you can download the workbook in the description section. All right. So let's look at what we'll be designing into this training. So here we have it. This is the chart of account we'll be setting up. We'll be using a case study a question and we'll use it to set up. So uh, this is the journal entry. This is where we'll make our journal entry. I will now have our trial balances, this trial balance column. Then we'll use the slicers to generate our general ledger. All right. So I'll be showing you this in today's training. So let's go right into it. All right. Okay, no, welcome. So first of all, we want to design a chart of account. I already have this chart of account designed here. I already have it here. But what is a chart of account? Chart of account is a list of account numbers used to categorize a different account type. We have the assets, we have the liability, uh, owner's equity or the owner's capital. Then we have the income and the expenses. These are the type of accounts we use when designing our chart of account, right? So the, the account type and their behavior. So it's important you understand the different account type, just as I've listed above, making you understand that for you to design a chart of account, you need to understand that we have a five account type, which is assets, liability, equity or owner's capital. Uh, we have the income, the expense, the cost of sales still falls under the expense, right? So how do these account type behave? How do they behave? So for you to master the double entry principle, you need to know how this account type behave. For assets, any account that you tag as assets, the default behavior is a debit balance, meaning that whenever there is an increase in your assets, you debit that account. Then when there is a decrease, you credit. So assets and expense have the same behavior. Assets is found in the balance sheet while expenses is found in the income statement. So they have the same behavior. So where there is an increase in assets or in expenses, you debit. When there is a decrease, you credit. So when you come to liability, the default behavior for liability is credit. So when there is an increase in liability, you credit it. And when there is a decrease, you debit. So it reverses the case with assets and expense. So we have liabilities, owners, equity, or owners capital. Then we have the income. And these three accounts, liability, equity, or owner's capital income, has the same default behavior. So they are all credit balance accounts. And when there is an increase in any of those three accounts, there is you put it's the, the increase brings about a credit entry. And when there is a decrease, it brings about a debit entry. So these are the key things I want us to understand before we go in to this training. Now, this is a key we'll be using, we used in designing this chart of account. This is the key we use in designing this chart of account. So we see that the code from one, all the one code, 1000 to 199 is assets. All the codes for two is liability. All the codes for three is equity, uh, owner's capital. All the code for four is sales, sales income or other income. So any um, of the income falls under four. Then all the uh, code for five falls on that cost of sales. Then we have our code from six to seven is expense because expense can be very large. We have different category of expenses. So that's why we are giving it this range. So this code range is not cast on stone. You can use the, whichever one that suits your preference. It can be numbers. It can be alphanumeric. All you need to do is to understand the code that represents each asset type. You need to state it clearly so that it will help you write. So in designing our chart of account, we have the account ID, the account name, the 
account type and the bank statement. So based on the question we have in, in here, this is the question we'll be looking at. We have a perfume business that started, the name of the business is Perfume Parlor, okay? Uh, the Perfume Parlor business started newly and uh, it started by putting $3 million into a business account. So from this particular uh, first transaction, you know that we have two accounts to, to work with. We have the capital account and the bank account. And that is why it's necessary when you look at the first one, you go to your chart of accounts. Do I have a bank account? Yes, we have a zillion bank accounts. Then, then you have a capital account. So what is our owner's capital? We have a capital account. So all you need to do is I work with this number. So the capital account, I use 3,000 owner's capital. What's the account type? is equity. And where is this account type? Which statement do you find it? You find it in the balance sheet. So it's for you to understand the account type majorly, when you understand the account type, you definitely know that the equity is found in the balance sheet. This is for accountants, but even if you're not accountant, a finance person, it's also uh, something you should have an understanding of. You should have an understanding of how this behaves. So you see these assets, these two, these two, they have the same behavior. Then this tree has the same behavior. Then the first tree are found in the balance sheet, while this two is what you found in the income statement. All right. So that's where you see the balance sheet and the income statement. So anything asset is balance sheet, liability, like balance sheets, owner's equity, um, equity or owner's capital, you find it in the balance sheet. But when you come to income expenses, you find it in the income statement. Right. So that's the rationale for this column. Right, so this is how we went about designing. So, but you notice that the cash on hand is assets, and assets is in the range of one. Right, so cash on hand is a current asset. The asset type is current assets. Then we have our statement type balance sheets. Because when you come to the assets, let me say something. When you come to the assets, you have, let me just impute it here, you have current assets. And you have non-current assets. Good. So when it comes to the liability, the same thing. What makes up the liability? The same current liabilities. Current liabilities. Then you also have non-current liabilities. So this will help us in preparing our final account. So it's good you have the structure everything was structured so that it will help you in designing your pack. So when you see current assets, you know it still falls under assets, right? So you see current assets, you see non-current assets, it still falls under the assets, the one code. So that's why you notice all the one code are all assets, we either current or non-current assets. So you have our account receivable, which is a current asset, 1,400. 1,500 property, plants, and equipment is a non-current asset. So a non-current asset is an asset you use over, um, you use in your business to generate income for more than a year, 12 months. So those are non-current. It stays for more than one year, right? So you have your long-term investment, which is also a non-current asset, and it's found in the balance sheet. So this is the idea. I just want you to understand the idea. So when you come to the liability side, so you notice we've entered the two because we say all our liabilities should start with code two. So when I, when you see code two, you know that that particular uh, chart of accounts line item is an is a liability, and liability are found in the balance sheet. So you see account payables, which is a current liability. You see your 2,100 bank loan, you receive collected loan from the bank, is a liability, which is a non-current liability, it's meaning that the, um, the bank loan is to be repaid over 12 month period, right? So you have your owner's capital. These are money you, as a business owner, invest into the business. If it's a, if it's an, uh, a, a sole proprietorship business, a, a partnership business, the money you contribute and invest in starting up the business, just as we'll be seeing in the example that we'll be using for this case study, right? So that is just it. As you go ahead, you will understand. You can see the income. The income is a four, four. Code four is sales income and other income. So anything that falls in income, and income is found in the income statement. So 4,000 is sales income. What's the account type? Income. Where is it found in the income statement? 
could uh, 4,100 is other income, what's the account type income, where is it found in the income statement? So we now have our code five. Code five is cost of sales. What are those costs you incur, you understand, to bring the goods you are selling to the point of it getting to the customer? Finally, we have a lot of things, packaging costs, transportation costs, advertising. You know, there are these costs that are directly, that affect the products getting to the customer. So those are the cost of goods sold, right? So that is where you capture that. So it's in the income statement. Then you have your expenses, which covers the range of six to seven. So you have printing expense and all those. These are the things uh, that covers all the expenses. And expenses are also found in the income statement. So this is just the idea of how we design this um, chart of accounts so that you have an idea of how chart of account is being designed. So let's go into the case study so that you will understand uh, how to make your journal entry and how to also uh, prepare your journal ledger and trial balance. Good. So we'll be using a case study so that you will understand better. We have a perfume business which is called Perfume Parlor Limited. They started a perfume business putting $3 million into a business bank account. So two accounts is being affected based on this transaction. We have the capital account, owner's capital account, and the bank account. So the owner is investing three million into the bank. So you come to your journal entry section. This is where your journal entry section is. But before we make this entry, we want to put on uh, a, a data validation on this so that the account, this thing we have here, the account name we have here, we can easily select from it. Right, so but before we do that, let's give this column a name. Mind you, this is in an Excel table, it's an, in, in an Excel table, and you know how to insert data in an Excel table. You just select the data, go to your insert tab, and here you go, you see your table. So it's grayed out because I already have it in the table, or you press Ctrl T, that is how to insert data in a table, right? So what you need to do is just click on the table design. When you select the table, when you select a, uh, a cell, in a range that is in, a, in an Excel table, the table design pops up. So I want to check, I've already given it a name. The name is COA, which is chart of account. COA, that's the name. So I want to give this column a name. So you just select the column, right? And you go to your name boss. So this account name, you just, so mind you, your, your the name should not have a space. That's why I'm using uh, an underscore, good. So this is what I will use to create data validation here. So I will just select, ensure this arrow pops up, show that you're, you're selecting the entire co um, column except the heading. So I will select this. Okay, good. I, I, I don't want to select the heading. That's why I said I had to do it twice. So it's just the um, the row below the uh, heading, um, below the heading, and it continues that way. So you now go to your data column. Then you come to your data tools, your data tab, sorry, your data tab. Then you come to under your data tools section, click on the data validation, select it. So we want to a list, we want a list we can be selecting from. So equals to, remember, you've given a name, so you press F3, F3, so that the name can come up. So you see the account name I just created, select it, and there you go, and you click OK. Good. So you see your that's the account names is now listed in a data validation list, drop down list. Right. So the first transaction said on the 1st of May 2023, uh, Perfume Palo started a business. Uh, the owner started a business by uh, putting three million into a bank account. And I see the two accounts that are affected is the bank and the owner's capital. So the description is um, owner's. Owner's capital. So the first, we are going to be debiting our bank account. Zillion is our bank account. So what's the account type? I want this account type column to behave in a way where immediately I select the account type, the account name, the account type pop-ups. All right. So what I will do is to use the VLOOKUP to do that. So I will give this two columns a name. I can use the index and match, but let me just stick with the VLOOKUP in this training. So I'll give it a name. I'll just call it account type range, account type, just account type. 
account type all right so we'll just leave it as account type i think that's fine so that the formula can be easy so it's of course to v lookup so i'm looking up for this where am i looking up for reads uh, i just gave a name account type range right so which column should it return the second column right and it should return the exact good then good so you notice what has happened zillion and this so i have a formula in here i'll just delete it good so i have a formula in here which i just deleted so immediately you select the bank account name the account type pops up and the same thing we want to happen here the statement type so we'll do the same thing here i'll give this range this account type and account statement type i'll just give it a name and call it statement type states type just states type so just a descriptive name that will make it easy for me to understand so it first to look up so we are looking up this right so look at it at the states we are looking at the states state type, I want it to return the second column and the exact, good. So there we go. So immediately you select current assets, the balance sheet will just pop up. So the first uh, entry is the debit, which is 3 million. Now this balance, I want it to give me the balance for each of the transaction entry, that's each of the transaction. It will help me in preparing the uh, trial balance. So I'll just say this is debit, minus credit good so you will understand better as we go ahead so the next the second entry because it will be still be the same i'll just copy this and paste here so you just do the second entry copy and paste because for accounting now you notice i have the na na good so because i don't want this na what i'll do i'll wrap this i'll say if if this cell is equals to, sorry, is equals to empty, if it is empty, return empty. Or if it is not empty, do the VLOOKUP and return it. All right. Then close it. Something is wrong. So if it is empty, return empty. If it is not yet, I need to put a comma, then close it. And there you go. Good. So that is it. The same thing I'll do to this one. I'll put the formula if. If this cell uh, is equal to if it if it uh, if it is empty, just to put this for putting sake, return empty. But if it is not, do the VLOOKUP and return. Good. So because it's dependent on this other cell. So but let's just leave it that way. So the next accounts because we we have posted in bank. The next one is the owner's capital. So this, this the entry in journal is more like, you need to understand your double entry very well. So it goes to the credit side, 3 million, good. So let me just increase. The cell is small for that figure. So we are good to go now. So that's all for the first transaction. So the second transaction, which is on the third, you notice that it says purchase perfume on credit from ABC Limited, 300,000. So purchase perfume on credit from ABC Limited, which is 300,000. And this perfume costs 6,000 per unit. That's the cost of uh, purchasing it. So on the third, on the third of May, 23. So one thing with the table, you see, as you are imputing it, the table updates automatically. So that's one good thing I love using table in carrying out my tasks on Excel. It updates, there's no need of you trying to, you know, put the formula. You see that all the formula I put here as I'm imputing more, more details, the formula are being copied into the new rows, right? So now we make purchase of perfume. So when you purchase perfume, two accounts are affected. You say purchase perfume on credit. So there is a payable, so as a business, you are buying on credit, meaning that you are owing is an account payable. And if you are buying goods that you are selling, it's an inventory. So we have the inventory because these goods are goods that you are selling. These are your major uh, merchandise, right? Because 
the business name is Perfume Parlor, right? So we'll just put it here, Purchase Perfume. So the first entry is the debit. So we have our inventory. So you notice everything just updates. So how much did we buy it? 300,000. So the next one, I'll just copy the dates here. You can just see. Uh, it should have the same description, right? So, so the next uh, entry is on credit. We bought on credit. So account payable. So we are owing. We didn't pay. So we bought it on credit. So it's an account payable and it's an access account. So 300000 Good. So what's the next transaction? On the 4th of May, the next transaction, we withdrew 100000 cash from the bank and placed it in the cash till. That is in our cash, our cash box. So we removed the, the transfer on the 4th of May. On the 4th of June, 20, 4th of May, sorry, 2023, there was a transfer, uh, bank transfer, uh, okay, cash withdrawal from bank. Let me just say cash withdrawal from bank. You can just, whatever, put it in a way you know. So the first is bank and cash so our cash is increasing cash is an access account so our cash is increasing so you look for your cash on hand so you debit it with hundred thousand hundred thousand so the next uh, entry now i just copy and paste here the same because Copy and paste here. Good. So we have uh, the bank. The bank is releasing the money. So there is a decrease in the money in the bank. And I, as I stated earlier, bank is an asset. When it's decreasing, is a credit. So you come here and you put 300000 All right. Good. So let's go to the next, uh, the next transaction. On the 10th of May, sold five units of the perfume. For fifty thousand, to Pinky Fashion on credit. So we made a sale, but well, that sales is on credit, meaning that there's a sales account to credit, and there's a account receivable we will debit because it's we didn't collect money. We made it on credit. We sold to Pinky Fashion on credit. So you on this date, tenth, tenth of June, twenty twenty three. We made a sale, a sales of five units of perfume to Pinky Fashion. You can put to Pinky, to Pinky Fashion. So we sold to Pinky Fashion, and being that we sold it on credit, it's account receivable. We didn't collect money, so our cash will not be affected. So money has not yet been collected. So account receivable will be debited. So we sold it for 50000 because each one is 10000 Good. So the next leg, uh, which is the sales account, because there is a sales was made, right? So you just copy the same description here and paste it here. Good. So oh, the next account is sales account, which is the income account. So we should have a sales account. Mind you, any of these accounts you want to use, if you don't have it, you can just go to your chart of account and create it. You just come down. It's a table. This is also a table. So you just create it. Look for the code. If it's a sales account, it's sales is four. So I can use 4,100, 4,200. Do you understand? I've already used 4,100. So I can't use 4,100 again. So I have 4,000 sales income, other income. You understand? Maybe there is another income I want to. Maybe I started doing, you understand? I started selling another set of goods. And I want to separate sales for each of those kind of goods. I can create an account for that. Right. So that's the essence of this. So immediately you create it here. It updates here on your list here. Because this is a table. And automatically it will update when it comes to 
uh, this, this is a table. So when you create it here, it updates here automatically. All right, so have that in mind. Good. So you have our sales income will be selected. It's an income account. We found the income statement. So you credit it. So for it's a credit entry. The default behavior sales income is a credit entry. So whatever that will increase sales, we've made sales. So sales increase. So it's 50,000 credit side. Right. So that's it. So one thing you have to understand concerning this transaction now, there is something that happened. When we made purchases of perfume, our inventory increased. Now that we are making sales, our inventory will reduce. But due to this training uh, we are in, we, are, we don't have an inventory section. So just for the purpose of this training, we'll still do a double entry that will recognize a deduction in the inventory because we need the cost of goods sold. So a deduction in the inventory and recognizing the cost of sales. Right. So still on that tense. So we'll just copy this. and paste it here. Good. So you say cost of five units perfume sold. Cost of five units. And remember from our previous question, when we bought it, it's at 6,000 per unit. So six times five is like 30, right? So we we'll debit our cost of sales. Cost of goods sold, we'll debit it. Good. Then with 30,000. Then we'll now credit our inventory because inventory will definitely reduce. You have like, uh, remember you have, you have 50 units. Now you've sold five, right? So your inventory should reduce by five. So inventory is a debit entry. If it's reducing, we'll put credit. Because it's reducing now, it goes to the credit side. So we'll still copy the details we have here. Copy details here. Then we'll select our inventory. Sorry. So inventory will go to the credit side. So this recognizes the deduction in the inventory and also recognizing the cost of uh, item that the exact sales that was made because you can't put the entire 50,000 cost of sales. As you sell, you put the cost of that element of sales in your income statement, All right? So let's move to the next transaction. The next transaction is on the 18th. And what happened on the 18th? On the 18th, it says paid 300,000 to ABC Limited by check. It paid 300,000 to ABC Limited. So let me do something. I think let me reduce this uh, to, let's say, pay 250 so that we'll still have some amount that we are expecting from ABC. Let's say 250. Paid 250,000 to ABC because remember, we bought the perfume for 300,000 and we bought it credit, we didn't pay. So at this point, maybe we've gotten some money, so we paid 250. So 250, our books will still be showing a payable of 50,000. So I just wanted us not let's not clear all the uh, <laughs> liability, let's just still have some so that you can see the impact. So 250 was paid to ABC Limited, whom we purchased uh, the perfume from. So on the 18th, you put your dates, 18th of May 2023. So um, purchase payment, purchase payment to ABC Limited. I mean, to use part payment, purchase part payment. Yes, you can just put the description that you know will help you more be more descriptive in your description so that it will help you as, as you just look at it. You know, so now we purchase, we made part payments, you know, part payments. Okay, let me not use the word part payment, let me not use the word purchase. Let me just say part payment to ABC Limited. 
to ABC Limited. Okay, so part payment to ABC Limited. I will make that part payment via check, I guess. So money left our bank and our account payable reduced. So account payable, remember, is a credit balance. So when it is increasing its credit, when it's reducing now, our account payable is reducing. So you select your account payable, which is the debit entry and 250,000. Good. So the next entry now, we'll just select this because it will be the same description for the next entry. Good. So the next entry is uh, our cash. That is the, where we made the payment from. We made the payment from bank. So money left our bank. Money left the bank. We made it via check. So money left the bank. So you select the bank and uh, credit 250 thousand good so that's it for that transaction so the next transaction says on the 20th we paid ten thousand for electricity bill ten thousand for electricity bill on the 20th of june 20th of june or oh, may sorry 2023 20th of may 2023 electricity bill so we made it via cash so first of all the debit balance is electricity bill is an expense so the expense account is a debit so we debit the expense account called electricity bill so we look for we don't have i think it falls under utility bill so we use the utility bill accounts to capture that so we have ten thousand good so the next The next, uh, just copy this and paste here. Copy this to input the, complete the entry for this electricity bill. So you have, we paid by cash. So you select your cash on hand. Money left our cash till so for 10,000 naira. Good. So that's it for that transaction. So let's go up again. What's the next transaction? So Pinky Fashion, now Pinky Fashion on the 27th pays amount that she's owing. Let's say she paid 50. Let me reduce this to, sorry. Let me reduce this to, let's say she paid 40,000 and she's still owing part payment. We still 40,000 from Pinky Fashion. So let me just reduce that for illustration purpose. So on the 27th of May 2023. So receipt from Pinky Fashion. So receipt money from her. Well, she paid us via bank, I guess. Let's see. Pinky Fashion paid amount of 40,000 by check. Okay, she paid, paid us via the bank. So we have to debit the bank. The bank increased. So she paid us 40,000. Good. So the next entry now. We still copy this. It should be the same thing. Double entry description is always the same thing. So this the next entry now is that Pinky's account, which is account receivables, because when we made sales to her on credit. We captured this as account receivable because she didn't pay. Now that she has paid, we have to reduce her account receivables. So she's no longer owing us 50. She's now owing us 10. So we reduce it by that 40 that she has paid by putting 40,000 here. All right. So that's the entry for that. So the next um, transaction says payments of 30,000 our sales rep salary for the month. So we paid 30,000 as our sales rep salary for the month. On the 30th, so our sales rep, 523023. So we just say sales rep salary for May. Sales rep salary for May 2023. So this, there's a salary account. So you look for the salary expense. Salary is an expense, right? 
So an expense is a debit. Is a, the default behavior is debit. So whatever that will increase it is debit. So we've paid salary. So there's it's it's increasing salary expense. So we'll just select this and we'll debit it thirty thousand. So the next entry, remember it's a double entry. It's a double entry. So the next entry is the same thing. So you just copy the same description and uh, you paste it here. Good. So what's happened? We paid via payment by cash. We made payment by cash. So money left cash and uh, we use it in paying salary. So cash will be reduced by 30,000 and that's why it goes to the credit side. Good. All right. So we are making progress. So the last transaction we have here says on the 31st, we drew 25,000 cash for personal use. Good. So the owner of the business, we drew 25,000 cash for our personal use. So on the 31st, there was a withdrawal. It's 1st of May, 2023. Uh, personal cash withdrawal. So, so if there is a personal cash withdrawal, that means your cash will reduce and there is an account for anything. An account we we'll call it drawings. Is a drawings account is an account where um, church, where the owner withdraws money for his own personal use, not for anything relating to the business, but for his own personal use. We we'll call it drawings, right? What that drawings account does is an equity account and it reduces the amount the, the, the owner has in that business. So we we'll look for drawings. I believe there's drawings. I can write it, but let's just pick it up from the drop down. We already have drawings accounts. It's an equity account, but it doesn't behave like equity, so to say. So let's just put it there. So it's an equity account and it's the balance sheet. So whatever that will be increasing drawings is the debit side. So you see that, um, yes, drawings is on the equity and equity does have this credit balance, but because drawing is reducing the money we have as our owner's capital, you understand? So drawing has a behavior that is the opposite of equity. So whatever that will increase drawings, right, will do what? Will be debit. So you debit it to 25,000. I know if you're not an accountant, even some of the accountants still find this a little bit uh uh, confusing some time, but as we go on, I'll see how we can do more of this so that we can have an understanding of this. So let's do the second uh, entry of this. Let me just copy this and uh, it faster and paste it. It's the second uh, entry of this transaction. So uh, personal drawing from cash. So we took money from cash, meaning that our cash on hand reduced. So cash on hand reduced. Sorry. So we we'll use this and put 25,000. Good. So we are done with our journal entry. So from the expectation we have for our case study, uh, I did read this from the initial, but we are to design a chart of account, which we have. Now we'll post the transaction to the period using a journal, general journal, which we have. So we'll have to prepare the general ledger and we'll prepare the ledger travel as in this training, we'll stop here. Then in the part two of the training, we'll prepare the income statements and the balance sheet. So let's go ahead to prepare the general ledger and the general ledger trial balance. So to prepare the general ledger, all we need to do here is to insert our slices. Just for real, the general ledger is just for you to see, uh, pick an account and see uh, the activity that took place in that account, right? So we we'll just insert a slicer. You just select any cell. You go to your table uh, design tab. You come to this insert slicer, select it. I want to insert slicer based on the account name. All right, and I'll click OK. Good. So this is the slicer. So I will just restructure the slicer. You see the slicer tab is now active. So I want the columns to be up to six. So let me make it, yeah, six is OK, good. So you see it has increased. So I will just resize it, resize it to make it a little bit visible much visible and position it all right here so we can it's okay here good so 
this this is good to go so i can increase the height of this you see okay i'll reduce it <laughs> good just for you to understand how this works so i can give it a green color which is one of my colors i use most of the time so that is it so what this does is this when i click on cash on hand uh watch what happens but before then i want us to activate the total row you know the table has this feature where you can have a total row after you have done your entry now that we're done with the entry i will just activate the total row so you select any cell in the table go to your table design so you see the total row i'll just check it so what it does is this so we are having 200,000 then something is wrong you see so I'm happy we're having 200 here is supposed to giving us uh, a balance of zero if everything is going on very well okay so you will notice here we have you see this transaction cash withdrawal from bank we draw um, cash from bank so money the cash we increased and we debited it then the bank Cash withdrawal from bank. The bank is supposed to reduce by hundred, so we have two, three hundred instead of hundred here. So this is where we have the challenge. So you see, the total now it's a check for us. So at at every point in time here is supposed to be zero to show that your double entry is okay, right? So I know we notice that this is the sum. We ensure that is the sum that you you have here. So it's supposed to be zero when all the accounts are. That's the account in your general yeah, in general journal. It's complete. Every at each point here is supposed to be zero. So you see where we have the mistake. So now let's look at how the general ledger works. The general ledger is we using the slicer. I will want to get our general ledger for each of the account uh, um, uh, account that we have posted transaction to. So if you want to see all the transaction that took place in account receivable, I will just click on it. So you notice that. My account receivable at the end is 10,000. So this is my general ledger. It's different from when all of them are not, none is filtered. When none is filtered, it's supposed to be zero. It's supposed to be zero. That's the general journal. It's supposed to be zero. But when I'm looking at individual accounts, that's, it's, that, can, that can be zero or it cannot be zero, depending on the transaction that takes place in that account. So when you look at utility bills now, you see 10,000. We already we just paid once in this month. So when you look at salary, it's 30,000. When you look at account payable, you see we have 50,000 remaining, right? So account receivable, we have 10,000 to pay, right? <laughs> we have 10,000 to pay. So this is how the general ledger works. So we'll also insert another slicer, uh, which will be the statement type, just to know the accounts that are for balance sheet and the accounts that are for the income statement. So the same way we insert a slicer, so you just come to your table design and you click on insert slicer and we'll just use the statement type to insert the slicer this time around and you click OK. And here we go, we have our slicer for statement type. So you just resize it to suit your preference and uh, give it a color that suits your preference. You can also change the name. OK, here I would like to change the name. So you select it and you know the slicer is up. So I'll just call this general ledger. Can just give it a name <laughs> general ledger good and there we go so this i will give it this color i will have to select this and give it this color so when you select bank balance sheets you see all item for balance sheets is filtered when you select income statement all item for income statement is filtered so the balance will not be zero because you're just <laughs> looking at just this aspect of your general journal so you clear it and everything is complete good so that is it for your general journal and your general ledger so let's go to our trial balance how, um, how do we prepare our trial balance so we use the balance this trial balance column to prepare our trial balance and how what we will use we we'll use the sum ifs we we'll use the sum ifs to do that so we we'll already give this let's give this table a name let's give this table a name so it already has a name journal so journal is a name so we'll be extracting the details from this column so you go back to your chart of account for us to create our trial balance you use the sum ifs and first to sum ifs i'll just use the sum if so sum if what's the sum range i'll use the journal table and i will get the information from the balance column I'll get information from the balance column. What's the criteria range? The criteria range is still the journal table. 
right? And I'll get the information from the account name. So account name is the criteria range. So what's my criteria? My criteria is this, right? And I close the bracket and here you go. Good, and here we go. So at each point in time, let's also activate the total rule of for this column. At each point in time, it should be zero. So you see your trial balance too. This can also serve as our trial balance. This too can serve as our trial balance, good, right? It can serve, but one thing is this, this one gives you for each of the accounts, you see the balance for each of the accounts. Why this just gives you for each transaction, transaction, but this for the, each of the account type. So cash on hand, as of this, the balance is 35,000. Our bank account, the balance is 260. So when you keep imputing your details on this, if you have more transaction as your business is going and you keep imputing, you see that everything will just be updated, right? So this is how you go about preparing your chart of account, which we did here. And you go get the idea of how this is being designed. You can go over and watch this. I will encourage you to go over what this tool you can understand. If you have any comments, any questions, please drop it in the comment section. I'll be there to answer and respond to them. Right. So you prepare your chart of accounts. And uh, after you've done that, you know how we go about this uh, journal. Um, general journal and after you've done that you create your slicer uh, for the general ledger which is the account name and the statement type right and there you go you can see the check we did here and also the check we did right here to show that our entries are correct so in the next training not to make this video very long it's already long <laughs> so in the next part of this video we'll be uh, designing our income statement using the trial balance we have already generated from our entry here and also our balance sheet. Thank you very much. If you've gotten value from this training, please do well to like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload valuative. And don't forget to share this with as many that you know that will benefit from this training. Thank you for staying on. I'll see you in the next training. Bye for now.